dating one of them and thought it was a group she could trust. All except for one, the leader of the group. Whatever he said would go in their eyes. Whatever he said to do, they would do it. From the first time I met him, I didn't like him. I didn't want to be around him. One night, Natalie was invited over to her boyfriend's house to listen to music and found the whole group there, including the guy she was scared of. Even though I was the only girl and there was five guys there, I thought, these are my friends. I, I didn't think anything was going to happen at all. But soon, the lead guy started talking about being horny and making sexual comments towards her. I thought, OK, I feel a bit uncomfortable now. I'm the only female in the room. And then he got out a box of condoms and then um, he started throwing them at me. Next minute, he started lighting matches and then throwing them at me. Lit matches? Yeah, lit matches. No one was sticking up for me or saying, what are you doing? Everyone was sitting there laughing. The lead guy pulled a couple of the other boys out of the living room. Then Natalie was called into a bedroom. The guy that I thought was scary was telling me that I'm supposed to give the other guy oral sex. And um, I was like, what, what are you talking about? I don't want to do that. And he kind of said to me that if I don't do it, he was going to stab me. So this is when I was thinking, oh my God, what do I do? My friend that I was speaking to, he was like, I can't help you, like, just do what he says, otherwise he will stab you. Natalie's friend agreed to lie and tell the others she'd given him oral sex. But then the lead guy came back into the bedroom. He came and sat next to me on the bed. I was, I was sitting in the dark on, on the bed, and then um, he had a knife to my throat, and he told me that if I don't have sex with him, he's going to rape me. And um, I kind of thought, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't want to say yes, and then I end up having sex with this stranger that I don't even like. And then I didn't want to say no and then get attacked. But then I had no choice. I had a knife to my throat. So I had sex while I was raped by him. And then after he had raped me, he told the guy that I was dating to come in and rape me as well. So then he raped me. And then um, after that, his little brother came in as well. It was like they were taking turns with me, basically, one after another. I was sore, I just wanted to leave. And then even after I got raped by his little brother, the main perpetrator came in again, and then he basically had round two with me. The boys took turns raping Natalie for hours. She was only able to get away the next morning when her boyfriend's parents came in. Later that day, Natalie broke down and told her mum what had happened. They went to the police to report the rapes. Natalie then endured months of anxious waiting to face her attackers in court. I went to the court and they told me where I was going to sit, where the perpetrator was going to sit and what was going to go on that day. But she never got the chance. I think it was the next day I got a phone call saying that I'm not needed in court anymore and that the case had been dropped. Why, why did it get dropped? It got dropped because they said that there was lack of evidence and that there wasn't um, a high enough percentage of chance that I was going to win the case. Natalie had to get in touch with the Crown Prosecution Service to arrange a meeting to discuss the case. It was horrible. They were so cold about it. So I was angry at this point as well because I was trying to tell them how I felt like even if I didn't win the case, at least I would have had a step to talk out about what happened so I could put my point across. They were saying they can't see any point in me going and putting me through the trauma to then be let down and know that I'm going to lose the case anyway. To me, I've had no closure or justice on the case, so... It felt like I'd been through all that trauma and all them statements, all the filming, the friends, it's... I went through all of that for no reason. Natalie is moving forward with her life, but can't escape reminders that her attackers got away with what they did. I've seen him quite a few times and he's living life. I don't even know if he remembers me, to tell you the truth. And that's what hurts the most, because I will always remember him, but 
I don't know if he'll even remember me. I would like to find out about what really goes on in the CPS because it sounds like they're not really doing their job or, you know, especially in Natalie's case, that they've done their job badly. I want some answers about what's going wrong. A senior prosecutor from the Crown Prosecution Service has agreed to meet me. Alison, why is it that more cases don't get to court? Um, there are a number of reasons. We look at all the evidence and decide, is a conviction more likely than not? Is there a realistic prospect of conviction? Um, I mean, very often people will think it's because we don't believe them, but it's not. It's we can't um, demonstrate to the court and to a jury that there is sufficient evidence there. Quite often we find that victims decide they don't want to go through the process themselves. OK, well, I met a girl who um, suffered a horrendous ordeal, a multi-perpetrator multi attack. Uh, she reported it to the police. She went through months of preparation for the trial and then the day before she was meant to go into court, her case was dropped by the CPS due to lack of evidence. Mm. Why would something like this happen? Um, I obviously can't comment on that particular case and mm. I don't know that particular case. Mm. But certainly in any case where we are um, not going ahead, we ought to be explaining to the victim why we're not going ahead so that she understands. Mm. The CPS drops more than half of the rape cases brought to them by the police. Just one in four rape cases originally reported actually ends up in court. Natalie is angry at the CPS, but she still feels reporting her attack was the right thing to do. Even though it was traumatising reporting it and going through that system, at least I was able to come out and speak about it because in the long run it's not good to block things up. So yeah, I would encourage other people because there's still a chance theirs could go further and theirs could, they could get some justice from it. Yeah, it's always worth taking that chance. I really admire Natalie's courage. I just hope that more women feel they can go to the police and report being raped, like she did. How can the police encourage more women to report rape? Ultimately, once a rape case comes to court, the decision comes down to the ordinary people on a jury and directly reflects how our society thinks about rape. Today, I'm meeting Jane, a young woman raped by a man she thought she knew well. She was staying over at a friend's. In the middle of the night, she woke up to find her friend's boyfriend in bed with her. I'd fallen asleep and woke up and he was behind me, um, raping me. I realised that it had to be him, he was the only male in the house. I didn't fight and I, and I didn't retaliate in any way because I was so shocked. I'd known this man for several years. I mean, I trusted him. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I froze. When he realised Jane was awake, he left the room. Jane left and reported the attack to the police almost immediately. But she then had to wait 16 months for the trial. It, it was the worst time of my life. Um, I would have always said that I was quite a strong person. Uh, I was very outgoing, sociable, happy person. And I lost that. I lost all of that. I just was somebody that I didn't even recognise anymore. The prosecution team didn't meet with Jane until just a week or so before the trial. It was all very rushed. They always stressed to expect disappointment because they very often see it in rape cases where violence was not part of the act. But they also, on the other hand, were telling me, this is the strongest case, you know, your evidence points towards winning it. Jane's attacker denied raping her. It wasn't until he was actually on the stand that we found out what his defence was, and that was basically that he couldn't remember, he had no recollection. 
he was saying that he couldn't remember. Yeah. 